Okay, so anything, any questions before we move on? In that case, chapter 7, fun and exciting. This is Cost of Goods Sold. It's the last thing we're going to cover before the next exam. So, as we talked about earlier, cost of goods sold and inventory are directly intertwined. Uh, when you buy things, they go into inventory. And when you sell them, they come out of inventory and go into cost of goods sold. That's the basics, but let's dive into it a little bit more. Um, so, inventory is a good thing and inventory is a bad thing. <laughs> it, why is inventory good? It means you have stuff on hand that you can sell to someone and every time you make a sale you have an opportunity to make a profit, right? The bad thing is inventory is a great big cash gobbling monster. Lots of money goes into inventory and having stuff even in a simple store. The bookstore down here probably has a million dollars worth of stuff in it. That's not very big. How much money do you think is in Costco? Okay. I mean, just think about it for a second. So if cash is an issue, like I've talked about, cash is king, what do you want to do with inventory? You want to keep it as low as possible but yet have the things on hand so that when the customer comes in to buy them, they can, they can buy them and you can earn a profit, right? So there's a fine line between having everything that ever, anybody could possibly ask for and having the right stuff at the right time. And that's a whole different class that I could get into and we're not going there in this class. So, <laughs> all right. Um, there are many kinds of inventory. For those of you who took the other class, we didn't talk about this. Inventory was just stuff on a shelf, right? In the big world, inventory is, in general terms, things that are held to, for sale. So if we are, uh, if we're the bookstore and we buy a new cash register, is that inventory? No, that's equipment because we're going to use it in the store. If we buy books, well, we're a bookstore. That's what we do, right? That's items held for sale. So that, that qualifies it as inventory. Um, inventory, by definition, is something you can touch. The uh, technical term for that is tangible. Remember, this is a language class. Um, or something used to produce goods or services. That's complicated. Think about it a different way. Let's say we are General Motors and we build cars. So what do we need to build a car? What? We need pieces, right? So our inventory is a bunch of stuff. Fenders, trunks, hoods, engines, transmissions, tires, steering wheels, seats. I mean, all kinds of stuff that we then put together and build a car. So those are the things used to produce a good, which is a car. So when you have components of inventory, you know, all those little pieces, uh, they're referred to as typically raw materials. So what we've talked about so far is merchandise inventory. <clears throat> Bookstore, we put books on a shelf, bang, simple, right? That's our merchandise. Raw materials can be anything. Fenders, hoods, engines, transmissions. It can be great big piles of iron ore that you're going to run through a, a smelter and, and make into I-beams, right? Um, if it's, okay, let's go to GM for a minute. I believe most of the time their, their factory runs 24 hours a day. But let's assume something happens and, and they shut down at 5 o'clock and go home, right? So the car is started way back over there. The assembly line is a mile long. It's halfway through at the end of the night at 5. They shut, turn off the lights and go home. You've got a half-finished car, right? That's called work in process. 
it's in the process of becoming finished goods. So there's different types of inventory. Are yes, sir. Are merchandise and finished goods basically the same thing? Um, pretty much. These three terms are te technically used for manufacturing. Mm -hmm. This is more of a retail term. Okay, yeah, I, I guess I'm getting mixed up because where I work, we manufacture and sell retail. Yeah. In one little spot. Nice. Makes it easy. Yeah, perfect example, actually. Guitar company. Start with wood, raw materials, get to work in progress, finish goods on the wall. It's really easy. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, so the use to produce goods, or what would be an example of merc or inventory that's used to produce services? Like how would you? That's a I tough one. I imagine what that would be, like a doctor's I've, instruments, or is that why it's different from supplies? Yeah. I was hoping someone would not ask me, but now that you did. <laughs> Yeah, it is, it is kind of odd to think about it that way, but a doctor's a good example. You go into the doctor, and what's the first thing he's going to do? Hopefully wash his hands. After that, he's going to put on rubber gloves. Then he's going to whip out his little tongue depressor, right? Then they're going to take the little plastic cover on a thermometer and put it in your mouth, and they throw the plastic cover away, How right? How long has it been since you've been to the doctor? What? How long has it been since you've been to the doctor? <laughs> Like a week ago, they take your temperature, they put the little plastic cover on the thing. Oh, tongue depressor, I haven't seen one of those in forever. Okay, I'll give you that. Okay, thank you. All right. But I'm trying to think of stuff on the fly here. I'm, I'm up here being, hang on. I'm up here being creative. I'm working hard. We appreciate that. Okay? And I'm getting clocked in the knees here. So, stethoscope is equipment, it's not inventory, it doesn't get used up. Yes, go ahead. I guess what I'm trying to, like, I think I'm really the same problem as Ernest. Why is it, like, not inventory or supplies? Well, am I selling you the proverbial no. tongue depressor? <laughs> no. I'm using it up to provide the service. Would it, so what, so that's what supplies? Yeah. So you have an inventory of supplies. No. I have an inventory. <laughs> of supplies used to produce goods or services. Okay? okay. Yes? I was thinking a good example. Is that on? It is. It is don't, after what they just did to me, darn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a good example is like you go to a carnival or something and you go to get your face painted. The paints are? Because the paints are. They have an inventory of paints. Because yeah. it's being used on the face and it's kind of like the service. Is the but those are, those are supplies. It's an inventory of supplies. So it shows up on our balance sheet as supplies. And that's really an inventory. Because at the end of the month, we go down and we count the supplies that are left and we adjust it, right? Mm -hmm. And they get expensed because we've used them up. That back leg might be want to fall off of there. Could you... Uh, Okay. So this is inventory as a general term, not necessarily as an account or anything specific. I inventory typically has its own account. It can have multiple accounts, though. Okay. You can have inventory, merchandise inventory that we're going to sell, those books. Mm -hmm. You can have supplies inventory, as we just figured out. Yeah. In a big manufacturing company, you'll see raw materials inventory, work in process, or what they call WIP and finished goods inventory. You'll see all those accounts on your, on your uh, general ledger. Cool. Okay? It just makes things a little bit more involved. Yeah. Sir? Um, I was just kind of struggling with the finished goods and the merchandise. I kind of thought of them as two separate things where merchandise is already in the shelf ready to be sold. Yeah. And finished goods is kind of something that has either come out and has to be inspected in order to be merchandise or is on its way to become merchandise. On its way to becoming merchandise. You are exactly right. So there You're on the right track. Let me go through the example. Okay? Let's stick with General Motors. Okay? We can all we've all seen videos of those cars going down the assembly line, right? So as it goes down the assembly line, they're pulling, you know, a frame, a motor, a transmission, seats, dashboard, fenders doors, all those raw materials are getting put together in something that is work in process, okay? 
And when they finish it, when it comes out the end of the factory off the conveyor belt, it's done. To that manufacturer, that is finished goods inventory. So that car goes out and sits in a big lot with a whole ton of other cars. We've all seen them. If you've been across the Benicia Bridge and looked down on the, on the right side, there's a whole ton of cars parked down there that came in on boats and on rail. Um, there's a bunch of Toyotas down there. And I think Ford unloads rail cars there too. Um, and probably some, some others. So those are all finished goods. Those cars then get shipped, put on a truck, delivered to the dealer. When the dealer you know, gives it a bath, puts it out and puts a price tag in the window, all of a sudden it becomes merchandise inventory. But to the manufacturer, it's finished goods until he sells it to the dealership. It's immediately finished goods when it's done. When it's done, yeah. I'm, I'm sure that when it comes out of the factory, it gets inspected. Yeah. Probably happens before it leaves the factory. And you know, that final test of that car is it rolls off that line. They start it and drive it out and park it in the lot. If it doesn't start, <laughs> got a problem, right? <laughs> Bad idea. Okay, other questions before we move on? Enough beating me up for now? How much longer do I have to go? <laughs> <Yeah>. No. <laughs> it's not. I want to make sure that you're ready for the exam. Okay? So look, I, I have high expectations of you guys. I know that you're sharp. I know you'll do well on the test. So for me to cheat and go home early and not give you the information, uh, that's me just lowering the bar and, and not respecting you guys. We're going through it all, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. When you buy inventory, I did this on the board. When you buy it, you pay a price for it, right? I bought, I bought a book. The book was a hundred bucks, okay? But I bought it on Amazon, so the book is in I don't know Minnesota, right? So I own a book. I paid a hundred bucks for it, but it's in Minnesota. Does it do me any good? No, Amazon's going to charge me something to ship the book here, aren't they? That's part of my cost of that book when it gets here. So not only is it the price I paid for it, but it's also what I paid to get it here. Now, let's think bigger for a second. Let's think our General Motors assembly plant again. Um, we buy a piece of equipment that goes on the factory floor that, I don't know, it's one of those mechanical robots that brings doors out and sticks them on the car, right? And all the guy has to do is put the, put the bolts in to hold the door in place. So when it gets here, I want to plug it in and make sure it works, right? Before I fire up the whole assembly line. So I have to inspect it and make sure it works. Then I have to install it on the assembly line, bolt it to the floor, line it up, program it right, you know, all that stuff. And sometimes if it's not exactly right, I have to modify it. All those costs are part of the cost of my item. Now, I just did something confusing because I'm tired. I started talking about a, a piece of equipment. That's a fixed asset. Um, let's stick with something that's inventory, right? Something we're going to sell. We got the freight. Inspection costs. Um, let's see. Guitar, right? Okay. Yeah. You, you buy the wood for the guitars and all the frets and the little pieces and they come in, you pay the freight to get them there. Then you got to go look at them. Is it the right kind of wood? Is it the right color? Has it been finished properly? Is it warped? Is it... So you inspect it, right? And then if you have to do anything to it to fix imperfections or whatnot, yeah. that's all part of your preparation cost. So that's the kind of thing. Then you can actually put it into the process and start making a guitar and at that point, you have work in process. So this is all work. This is all um, raw materials inventory. But it's all of these costs to get it into you, to get it inspected, and get it ready to go. That's all part of your cost of your purchases. It seems like it'd be pretty difficult, typically, to separate out all of those costs to actually put them into your your 
cost of inventory. Actually, preparation cost, you have to have a really accurate log of hours. I spent this time looking at this wood. Right. You, you would, and it can become very time consuming if you break it down like that. If you've got a big company where lots of stuff is going through this process, you have one guy and it's all of his wages, mm -hmm. right? Oh, yeah. Or maybe two or three or whatever. <laughs> In that case, it's easier. But each of these it has its own general ledger account. So that helps you accumulate the costs. Sure. Good? Yeah. All right, other questions? Okay. So. Let's see, we, bought, we buy inventory, right? We bring it in, we inspect it, we pay the delivery costs, all that good stuff, and it becomes inventory. <clears throat> inventory then, when we use it up, becomes cost of goods sold. Um, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. But we want to talk through, this is the simple thing. If I buy books and I pay the freight, and then I sell books, simple. If I'm building cars, however, Parts come in, raw material, goes into raw material inventory, goes into work in process. Now, in addition to your work in process, think about this, all the guys that work the assembly line, all of that labor and all of those other costs go into making that car, right? It actually becomes part of your inventory. The factory overhead, the fact that we're burning the lights and you know using electricity uh, heating the, the warehouse um, paying rent on it paying insurance on it all those costs are part of that car when it's all done so those costs get accumulated and stuck in work and process and then when the car rolls off the assembly line it immediately becomes finished goods okay. the thing I want you to realize here is these other costs become part of the cost of that car at the end. Good? Yes, sir, I interrupted you. If you were to calculate factory overhead, you'd take, like, you know, for the period that you're looking at, you take total factory overhead divided by the number of pieces you made? Yeah. That kind of thing? Yeah. Okay. That's how much <clears> that You can start falling into a standard costing system and all kinds of good stuff, which is fairly involved and I'm not going to hit on yeah, in this class. <laughs> it's not. I mean, there are guys that specialize in it, and it's kind of a lot of fun. Uh, it's kind of, it is. Some of us like it, some of us don't, you know. Um, but figuring out standard costing systems or factory overhead rates and allocating to the, based on the number of units that run through that, that building can be a lot of fun. You get to sp this is where accountants get to spend time out from behind their desk. I need to observe for a while. You walk out there with a stopwatch, everybody groans, you know. <laughs> but, you know, you need to know how many come off per hour and, you know, what's going on. Um, I know, like, the Ford Heavy truck plant in Kentucky does 78 cars a day or something like that, trucks. 78, that's not a lot. You'd think it'd be a bigger number. It's a 4 million square foot facility and they crank out 78 trucks a day. Hello? High five on that one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Take your time, get it right. I understand. But it costs money because you're running this factory overhead yeah. number up. You know? So same dollars, more pieces runs your cost down. Your average cost per unit comes down. Good? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, here's what we were talking about before. This is harder than what I did a minute ago. Can we go over here? <clears throat> you guys remember this. I want to do it again because I want to make sure that you guys get it. So we have beginning inventory. Let's say it's $10,000 worth of stuff. Okay? And then we're going to purchase more stuff. Let's say we buy another $40 thousand dollars worth of stuff. Good? We paid some freight to get it here. We got a discount. Notice I like to make the math easy. 
<laughs> okay, but we also had to do some inspection costs. Good. That gives me delivered cost of purchases. $41,000. So I had some, I bought some more, gives me the total that I could have sold. Otherwise known as goods, 40, 40 plus one minus one plus one, 41. So what I've started with plus what I brought in gives me goods available for sale of fifty-one thousand dollars. Okay? So if I sold everything, my cost of goods sold would be fifty-one thousand dollars. But did I sell everything? Typically not. Typically there's something left at the end. So that's less your ending inventory by N, V. How much inventory was left, anybody? Six thousand bucks. Subtract ending inventory gives me cost of goods sold. Forty-five thousand dollars. Like that. Neither can I. Which part? Delivered cost of purchases. Cost avail are goods available for sale. So that's what this slide shows you. But I think it's better to look at it like it looks on an income statement. Yeah, fair enough questions on that. You will see that again. Hopefully I will see that from you again. <laughs> right? <Zelda>. Probably. <laughs> so the well, cost of goods sold. Forget nature of. They're, they're, this is a roundabout way to tell you that that's what's going on. Okay? So we have, we have inventory, we bought some more stuff, plus these other costs. Gives us delivered cost. And then that plus beginning is goods available for sale. Less ending inventory gives you, this is what the stuff really costs us. Okay? Okay, questions, answers. <sighs> yes. And as if, yes sir, please. I need to foot what? Oh. Let's see. Yeah, right here. 40 plus 1 is 41. Minus 1 is 40. Plus 1 is 41. Ch -ch -ch delivered cost of purchase is $41,000. Goods available for sale is beginning inventory plus this. Gives me $51,000. Okay. Good? Yeah. Okay. The underlining it would have helped tremendously. So that's my fault. I'm just making sure it wasn't a random thing that Yeah, I, I'm just making this stuff up. <laughs> I couldn't make this stuff up. <laughs> okay. So, as if inventory wasn't interesting to begin with, there are different ways to value inventory. Anybody going, hang on a second, what does that mean? Is an inventory, I paid, I paid for it, I paid $100 for this book, isn't that its value? Maybe. <laughs> what do you want it to be? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, there's different methods to calculate your ending inventory. Assuming you have lots of pieces of ending inventory. Specific identification is 
I bought this at the store for 45 bucks. Okay? And then I bought this for a dollar. So what's my cost on this? 45 bucks. This is a dollar. I've specifically identified the cost for each of these. Okay? Um, this typically happens with high dollar items. Like a car dealer, you go into a car dealer, he knows how much money he paid for that blue car that you're looking at versus that red car that you're looking at. He knows what he paid for each one. That's why they have a different price. I guess the easy one to look at, weighted average, is you take the cost of this car plus the cost of that car, add them together, divide by two, right? So my, that's my average cost for a car, so I could sell them both for the same price then, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm sharing some of the cost between the two cars. Then you'd have to buy that 10 for 23 dollars. That's right, I'd have to sell this for 23 bucks. These others are a little more, or a little less intuitive. First in, first out. <clears throat> The first inventory items we buy are the first ones we sell. Think about how the, the merchandise moves. When you go down to the grocery store, the same example my instructor used with me, how many ever years ago. You go down to the grocery store, you open the, the, you go all the way to the back, you need milk, right? I need milk. You open the refrigerated container. What do you take? The first one, correct? No, 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 just, just all right. <laughs> Let's say you don't have a choice, you take what's in front, okay? Barring what you do, <laughs> you walk up, you take the one in front, the first one. All the ones behind it roll forward. So the next guy that comes and opens the refrigerator takes the first one. Later on that night, the guy comes to refill it. He goes around back and he adds more to the back. So the first one that he puts in is the first one that comes out. The last one that he puts in is the last one that comes out. So that's called first in, first out. All right? So if I bought the red car first and it has a price, when I sell it, my cost is that the value I paid for that. Okay? When I sell the blue one, then it's the cost of the second item. We'll do some examples of this. Last in, first out is her. <laughs> you walk back to the refrigerator, <laughs> you open the door, you grab the milk all the way in the back. <laughs> no, but think about it. There's a place for this. Last in, first out. If you have uh, non-perishable items, right? So a stack of books, right? You have a, you're a big book publisher. So you have a warehouse full of books, and they come on a pallet. You unload the truck, you put the first pallet over against the wall. You unload the second pallet, you put it in front of that one, because they're the same one. You unload the third pallet, you put it in front of that. I got four pallets now. Order comes, somebody wants to buy that book. Which is the first one I take? The last one, the last one off the truck. Last in, first one out. So that's usually defined by how you store your stuff. Is there another reason to do it that way? Yes and no. I'm using the, the thought of the physical movement of the goods okay. to, to sell the concept here. Mm -hmm. Now, in the real world, <clears throat> the inventory costing method you pick does not have to have anything to do with the physical flow of goods. Sure. Doesn't. Think of another reason to do it that way. Okay. <clears throat> We're going we're gonna to do some calculations, and I, it'll become really apparent. Okay. Okay? You can affect, you can drive net income one way or another by choosing one of these methods. Really? Yes. Once you pick the method, you must stick with it. But I can pick one method for these, and I can pick a different method for these. But for each item, once you pick it, you're stuck with it. It's all so you can calculate your cost of goods sold. Cool. That's all it's for. And calculate what your ending inventory is. Okay? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are we going? Oh, now they're going to explain it. <laughs> I already did this. Oh, here's some, here's some technical terms you need to, need to know. 
Weighted average was the fourth one. First in, first out is called FIFO. Last in, first out is called LIFO. Okay? Yeah. It's like a board game, right? Roll the dice, you're playing LIFO. <laughs> Questions on that? Yeah, 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 I covered this. Okay, we're going to tackle this next. However, let's call it 7.30, let's take a break. You can turn that off. Um,